Okay, so here we have a beam with a distributed load across the top of four kilonewtons per meter, a point moment here in the middle of six kilonewton meters, and a point load here at the end of three kilonewton meters. And what we need to do is we need to solve for the shear and moment diagrams of those and see what they are. And that's what we're going over in this video. And I will have the steps for going over and drawing shear and moment diagrams down in the description. You could check that out. And if you find this helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So the first thing we need to do, like always in drawing shear and moment diagrams, is we need to solve for the reaction forces. And so what we can do is we can solve moments about point A so that we can find our force B. And we are going to say that this is our x direction and this is our y direction. So if we say that the sum of the moments about point A equals zero, we have our force B sub y here at six meters away. And we will say that it is positive because it is going in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, then we have our six kilonewton meters. It is turning in a clockwise direction. We'll, so we'll say it's positive, or it's negative, sorry. And then we have our three kilonewton force. It is eight meters away, and it is turning also in a clockwise direction. So it is negative. So three times by eight. And then we have our four kilonewtons per meter distributed load here across the top from going from zero to six and we will um, have the center of gravity for that here in the middle at three because that's where it is and four times by six is 24 and it would also be turning in a clockwise direction so we'll say it's negative so minus 24 multiplied by three and so <clears throat> multiply these together and then add them all up divide subtract them over to the other side, divide by six, and you end up getting that B sub Y equals 17 kilonewtons. So it is pushing up right there with 17 kilonewtons of force. And now that we have that, we don't really need to worry about the forces in the X direction because there are none. And so we're gonna sum forces in the Y direction. So the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. And so we have b sub y, 17 kilonewtons in the positive direction. a sub y, we'll assume that it is also pushing up. So a sub y, we have our minus three kilonewtons over here. And then we have our four kilonewton distributed load here. And once again, it is 24 kilonewtons of force pushing downward, so minus 24. So we'll add all these together and subtract it over the other side and you end up getting the a sub y equals 10 kilonewtons. So those are reaction forces at point A and B. And I'm going to write them over here. Now I'm going to draw our free body diagram over here so that we can draw our shear and moment diagrams below them. and that will help us line them up and keep track of everything. So here we have our free body diagram written with all of our forces and moments and we have our shear and moment diagrams down here labeled V for shear and the units and M for moments with its units and we have it drawn lined up and that way we can keep track of what is changing with our um, loading on our beam. And the first thing we want to do we're going to draw our shear diagram starting from the left and going to the right. And we're going to start off with this 10 kilonewton force. It is going to push the shear up. And so we're going to start up here at 10. Because it is pushing up, so it will have a positive change in our shear diagram. And then with our 4 kilonewton per meter distributed load, it is going to move our shear diagram down. 
And remember that while we draw it like this in engineering because it makes sense, from a calculus standpoint it doesn't make sense because this would really actually be negative area under the line. If this was a um, loading diagram, there would be negative area here. And what that means for us in drawing our shear diagram is that negative area will be a negative change in the shear. And so the area under the curve is the change in the shear. So if it's negative area, it's going to move it down, which that is because these arrows are pointing down. It is pushing down on the beam. And so we have four kilonewtons across six meters. So that's 24 kilonewtons. And so it is going to move it down with a change of 24 kilonewtons. So we'll do 10 minus 24. Now 14, we'll write that down here. Negative 14. And so that goes all the way down here to where we have our meter six. And we're going to draw a line because the slope of our line here, um, the slope of the shear diagram is the intensity of our loading diagram. And so it's going to be a constant. And so we'll just have a linear line going from there to there. And that represents what's going on here. Notice this point moment doesn't affect the shear diagram. So now we come to this 17 kilonewtons of force. It will once again pop it back up, up 17. So 17 minus 14 is 3. So it'll go all the way up to 3. And then from, from the 17 kilonewton force to this 3 kilonewton force, we don't have any forces. So it's not going to change. So it's going to go over here and it gets to this 3. It's going to drop it back down. And that's how we know that we did it right or at least one indication that we did it right because all the numbers check out. It came down 24, up 17, and then down 3, and that brought us back to 0. And that goes back to 0 because at this end of the beam, there's nothing supporting it, and so it cannot support um, any shear. And so that's going to go back down to 0. So we're going to label that, 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 came, that is 3 right there. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to find at what point it crosses this axis because that is going to be a max or a min on our moment diagram. And so there's a couple ways we can do that. Um, probably the easiest way is to just look at this and say, well, we know it's going down four kilonewtons per meter. And so if we go over one meter, it's gone down to six, go over another meter, it's gone down to two, go over up half a meter and it will reach zero. So that's going to be 2.5. And another way to do that is we can represent this line as a function. So we can say V sub X equals, we know our slope is negative four. So negative four X. And then here at our zero point, um, it is at positive 10. So we'll say it's plus zero or plus 10 and that way if you plug in a 0 for x you get 10 and that's where our function's at right there and then if you wanted to find where it crossed where it was 0 you would plug in or you'd set it equal to 0 and you said 0 equals negative 4 x plus 10 add the negative 4 x over the other side and you get 4 x equals 10 divide the 4 over and you get that x equals 2.5. So you know your um, your shear function crosses at 2.5. And we'll need that for when we're doing our, our moment diagram. So we go over here and we know that it is going to start at zero. Our moment diagram is going to start at zero because this is a pin connection and pain connection can't support a moment reaction and so it's going to be zero. Say if it was a fixed connection it could support a moment and you'd have to find your moment reaction here and that was what we would start off at the top here for your moment. But we know it starts at zero so 
we want to find how much it is going to change by the time it gets to here at 2.5. Um, the area under the curve is going to be, the area under the curve for the shear is going to be how much the um, moment function is going to change. So we can find that 2.5 times by 10 divided by 2 is 12.5. So it is going to end up reaching 12.5 here. We'll say that that's 12.5 on our moment diagram. And then it is, because it's positive area, it's gonna go up. So we know it's going up instead of down. Um, then this is a negative slope here. So we know it's gonna be concave down. So it's gonna look something like this. Um, and then it would continue in its path because of this all the way down to this point at six meters. But there is this point moment here that we have to account for and that is going to be a jump or a drop in our moment diagram and we need to figure out which. And the way we do that is because this is a couple moment we can um, basically look at it from any point. If we adjusted it to be over at this end, it would be bending the beam that way, right? Because it is going in a clockwise direction. And so if we looked at it from there, that is what it would look like. And the reason why we're looking at it like that is because if you go back to your sign convention on your for your moment, what is a positive and negative moment, this is a positive moment and so we can see here that that would be considered a positive moment we look at it like this that's the same so it is going to be a positive moment and therefore a positive jump in our moment diagram and so it is going to go up to up six but we didn't find what that is happening at at three meters and we're only at two and a half meters. So we got to continue this. And what we could do here to know what, at what point that um, the moment function is at, at three meters, is we could integrate this function. So we got the moment function of x, integrate that, and you'll get that that is 2x squared plus 10x. And then the plus C would be our initial condition because you plug in zero for X and that is zero there. So our C would be zero. And then if we wanted to find out, out what it was at three, we would plug in three for X. And so negative two times by three squared plus 10 times three, that's 30 minus nine times two, 18. 30 minus 18 is so it goes from here at 12.5 to here dropping down just a little bit to 12 and the reason why we need to know that is because it's going to jump up 6 so it's going to go from 12 to 6 so that will reach a height of 18 and then basically from that point over to here, nothing changes. So we're gonna continue with our um, function, this function, and there's a couple ways we can figure out where it ends up, but it is going to end somewhere along this line here at six meters, but we wanna know how, far, m how much farther down it goes. So we can find the area under the curve here, and that would be 2.5 to six, that's, 3.5 meters and then multiply it by 14 and then divide it by 2 and you get the area under this triangle. We know that this is a negative area so it's going to drop down and the area under that would be negative 24.5 so it would drop down um, sorry not negative 24.5 just negative 24 it's going to drop it down to negative six, right about there. 
we'll say that this is six here and we'll label that right there that that is negative six. And then for the rest, we have a positive area here and it is over two meters and it's got a height of three. So the area under that would be six and it's positive, so it is going up and that means our math checks out. So it goes from six up to zero because once again, this is a free end. It doesn't have a reaction on there, so it can't support a moment. And so it is going to go back up to zero. So there we have it at zero. And um, we could find out where this crosses, but we don't really need to. We do need to label this is at 2.5 and then this is at three because we need to know where those maxes are. And then if we want to find out where the moment goes to zero, we can solve for that point by basically just plugging in zero for x on this again, or for our moment equation, and that would give us what point on the beam that that goes to zero. So that is how you draw your shear and moment diagrams and all of those steps are listed down in the description. You can check that out if you want a video going over the process for drawing um, shear and moment diagrams. You can check out this video link. It'll also be at the end of this video. You should also check out other example problem videos that I go over that'll better help you understand what is going on with drawing shear and moment diagrams. And if you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them down in the comments. I will reply to them. I've also been creating some awesome designs with the student engineering logo and been putting them on shirts and they, some of them look like this and there's other ones. You can check that out and buy them down in the description. There's a link to going to Amazon and Teespring and that totally helps me out if you buy some of that merch. Um, if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer with student engineering. My goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.